I want to read to you a verse from Exodus chapter 14 that is just dripping with irony. The children of Israel have left Egypt and they're traveling towards the promised land, but they've only got as far as the sea and they are pitched um, beside Pi-Hahiroth. And word comes that the Egyptian army is hastening to destroy them. And the Bible tells us there that they cried out to the Lord, but then they said this to Moses in verse 11, because there were no graves in Egypt, have you taken us away to die in the wilderness? No graves in Egypt. Egypt is famous for its graves. My wife and I visited there some years ago, and all we saw were graves and the treasures from the graves. The Egyptians professed to be living for the afterlife. They spent their lives, especially the upper classes, gathering resources so that when they died, they would have everything available for them in the afterlife. But they betrayed themselves because they built their cities on the sunrise side of the Nile and they built their graves on the sunset side. So whether you go to the Egyptian Museum in Cairo or to Saqqara, which was the burial site for hundreds of years for the ancient capital of Egypt, Memphis, or further south at Tebes, where you have the Valley of the Kings, or go to Giza, where you see the Great Pyramids, everywhere you look, they show you the graves, or the mummies that were in the graves, or the treasures that were in the graves. No graves in Egypt. They were really rubbing it in and saying, did we have to come out here to die? Was there was no place we could be buried in Egypt? And Moses' reply to them went like this. Do not be afraid. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. And then he says, the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. You know, there are many circumstances in life where we feel a bit betrayed by the Lord, like, Lord, I thought you would do this or do that. Like, this isn't working out the way I thought it would. But the Lord had the plan all in hand. He knew exactly what he was going to do. And in actual fact, that sea before them, through which they would travel in safety, would become the grave of the whole Egyptian army. So often in life, when we're faced with these troubling circumstances. And you can be sure that standing there on the shore, every nerve in their body was screaming, do something. And God said, no, stand still and let me do something. So maybe you're in a circumstance like that. It looks like, you know, the mountains on either side and the sea before you and the army coming at you and there's no place to turn. There is one place to turn, isn't there? and that's upward. That's to look into the face of your father and to remind yourself he has a huge vested interest in you. He gave his son to redeem you. He's redecorating heaven so you'll feel at home there. He sent his spirit to live within you. He filled his book with promises for you to enjoy. So let God carry on Allow him to do what he wants to do. Don't panic. Entrust your case to him. When everything seems impossible, that is the perfect situation for God to act. As we went through, especially the El Karnak temple, this massive temple, uh, every wall covered with hieroglyphs where people were praising themselves, the various pharaohs uh, would put on them all these pictures of themselves as being the great leaders that they wanted everyone to remember them as. I noticed over and over again that the serpent had the anka, the key of life, as if that was the secret. It was in the hands of the serpent. That was the lie in Eden. 
that the devil knows what's going on and God doesn't want you to know. It's not true. God has revealed his purposes to us. He's revealed his will to us. And his thoughts toward us are more than we can number. Thoughts of good and not of evil. Don't be fooled by this world system around us, which tells us, you Christians, you're being bypassed. History's going the other direction. You're in the wrong setup. And you're going to, you're going to be ruined. It's lights out for you. No, it's the other way around. This world is a graveyard, and the lie is that the serpent has the key of life, but it's Jesus who has the key of life and the key of death on his belt. And he says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, for the Lord will fight for you. The battle is the Lord's. We stand with him. He doesn't ask us to go out into battle alone. He stands with us. Thanks be to God, who always leads us in triumph. We can trust him. We can put our hope in him and know that he knows the way through the sea, through the wilderness, through the difficulties that lie before you. Let's put our hope in God. Let's remember that Egypt is a place that betrays itself by putting its graves on the sunset side. For the child of God, the Bible tells us that it's all bright. There's no sunset side for the Christian. The path of the just is as a shining light shines more and more to the perfect day. And so while we wait for the day star to arise in our heart and the shadows to flee away, let's put our hope in God, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. <music>